In this video, I will show you how you can use systemd in WSL. Systemd and its set of services initializes your system and it also monitors and controls other services that are running on the system. Some people like it because it's so convenient and easy to use, other people dislike it because almost every Linux system out there today depends on systemd. And because so many Linux systems use systemd, also a lot of applications depend on systemd. If you want to run such applications, your system needs to run systemd, otherwise you will need to find some alternatives. And those alternatives are probably not so great. WSL distributions don't run systemd by default, so it makes sense to run systemd in WSL as well, and that's what we will do in this video. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. What you can see here is an official blog post from the WSL team, and they claim here that systemd is now supported in WSL. They also have a nice video here where they explain what they do, and down here you can see also some further explanations. On Ubuntu you can run Snap, because Snap depends on systemd, and with Snap you can install Spotify, Postman and a lot of other applications. Now in order for this to work, you need to have the Microsoft Store version of WSL.67.6 or higher. Since this blog post is at the time of recording around a year old now, you probably already have the version, but if you don't, just call WSL-update and you should get it. And then it continues explaining how to use it. It's really easy to enable it. You just need to add systemd equals true flag into the boot section of the etcwsl.com file. Now let's get over to WSL and let's see how it works. I will open the terminal. Here is my PowerShell terminal. And now I will log in into my default WSL distribution. WSL. I'm now logged in. And if I look at etc slash WSL conf, no such file, and that means that I'm currently not using systemd. Before I enable systemd, let's see what is running on the system right now. So let's open htop. This is htop, and what we can see here is that six processes are running by the root user and two by myself, including htop itself, of course. I will enable the tree view by pressing F5. Now looking at the tree view, we can see that all processes are spawned from this init process. This one is the first process that was started, and this one has the ID number 1. This init root process was developed by the WSL team, and it initializes your WSL distro. As you can see, it spawns other processes, and it looks like that it also spawns itself. Usually this kind of initialization is the job of systemd. Now let's close htop. Let's now create the WSL conf file and enable systemd. So write sudo nano slash etc slash wsl.conf, enter. And now here, let's copy the content, copy. And I will paste it in by right-clicking. Now press Control o enter, and Control x for exit. That's it, now let's exit the distribution and call wsl-shutdown. Now let's log in again. Now everything looks normal, but my WSL distribution is now running systemd. Let's open htop. Now here in htop, we can see a lot more processes. Here we can also see something familiar. We can see the WSL init process and almost the same substructure as without systemd. But this time the WSL init process was not the first one to start. Instead, the sbin slash init process was the first one. And this one has also the PID number one. If we look at the tree structure, then we can see that all other processes, including the WSL init, were spawned by sbin init. And if we scroll down, then we can see this is always the case. Now you probably wonder what are all of those processes. A lot of those are actually services or daemons, and as you can see, those here are part of systemd. But what is this mysterious sbin init? If we exit htop, and let's take a look at this sbin init, we can see that sbin init is actually a link to systemd. Systemd initialized my system and also started all of those services and daemons. It also controls and monitors those services. So for instance, if I write 
system CTL, which is a systemd utility, we want all services that are currently running. Enter. Now here you can see a list of currently running services that systemd controls. Some of them you can also recognize from other Linux distributions, like for instance, the snap daemon here, or SMB daemon, or SSH. So basically, systemd started all of those services that were installed on my system. And that's one of the reasons why it is so convenient. Now let's close that. And I will also exit out of my WSL distribution. Now let's look at a practical example. I will list my WSL distributions. So we saw Ubuntu is my default WSL distribution. And I also have a different one called Mate. And this one was actually created from a running Docker container. I also made a video about it. So if you're interested how to create a WSL Linux distribution from a Docker container, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. This Mate Linux distribution actually has installed the full Mate desktop on it. You can connect to the desktop using remote desktop connection. And then you can see the whole Mate desktop on Windows. We will see how this works. But the important thing is that this requires some services that needs to run first. So if I start the WSL Mate distribution, I'm now logged in as the root user. And now if I list all the running processes, as you can see, there is not much going on here. And you can also see the slash init process, which has the PAD number one. This is the default WSL process and no systemd is running here. And that means that we would need to run the necessary services by hand, basically. We did that in the mentioned previous video, but in this video, we will enable systemd and then all the services should run automatically. So let's enable systemd. I will paste in the command, this one here. So this one will write systemd equals true into the boot section of etcwsl.conf file. And since I'm the root user, I also should have all the permissions. Enter. Perfect. Now let's exit. And let's do WSL shutdown. And let's log in again. I'm logged back in. Let's now check all the running processes. And now we have a lot more going on. And we can also see the sbin in it with the PID number one. So this is systemd running. And now let's list only the running services using systemctl, enter. Here you can see the list of running services. Now in order to connect to the Mate desktop, three services need to run, and those are dbus, systemd login d, and xrdp. All of those were started automatically using systemd, and that means that we can now connect to the Mate desktop. So open remote desktop connection, remote desktop connection, localhost, and connect. I trust this one. And it's already working. This is now XRDP running inside the WSL distribution. And now let's log in using my test user. OK. Perfect. I'm logged in. And this is now Mate desktop running inside a WSL distribution. Let's see if it works. Seems to work just fine. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. If you're interested how to run a full desktop environment like the Cinnamon desktop inside a Docker container and display it on Windows like we did here with the Mate desktop, then you can check out my previous video. The link to the video is up there or down in the description. This is my video number 100 on YouTube, so thank you very much for all the support. If you like my videos, then like and subscribe. And if you really like my videos, then you also have a super thanks down there where you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.